This is probably the best news that I've read in a very long time in this crypto space. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Magistrate Judge Netburn denies the SEC's attorney-client privilege claims. The predominant purpose of the communications was not to provide legal advice. The documents must be produced. Jeremy Hogan right here, absolute legend. She used the H word, Jim, the H word. Hypocrisy. They're hypocrites. This is bullish as anything. Watch the FOMO into XRP. I've been talking about XRP for a very long time. This is just the beginning. Bullish as anything. Let's go, people. Boom. Guys, how exciting is it to finally see some light at the end of the tunnel? It finally seems like the SEC lost to Ripple. Well, we might not be official yet, but from the looks of things, the SEC is about to have their walk of shame, and it's coming soon in the next couple of months. If this is something you'd be interested in, stick around to the end of the video as we uncover what was discovered in the hearing that happened almost a month ago. We'll also be talking about what the judge uncovered and some other nitty-gritty about the lawsuit. Before that, let's roll that beautiful intro. As always, welcome back to MoneySide, your favorite crypto news channel. If you're new here, welcome to the XRP team. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our daily crypto news updates. Now, before we move forward, here's some pretty interesting news that may have come up as Michael Saylor claimed Cardano to be a security. Saylor is a renowned vocal supporter of Bitcoin who recently in an interview claimed that all digital assets that have had an initial coin offering and hard forks are security. Anyone who's been in the crypto industry long enough knows that there's been a lot of gray area around such topics. Case in point, what is currently going on with Ripple and the SEC lawsuit? There's definitely a lot of things that people still don't understand about ICOs, who holds the crypto assets, does that mean the assets are centralized or decentralized, and so much more. Following Michael Saylor's comments, Charles Hoskinson fired back and even warned that Saylor could go bankrupt if Bitcoin fails to regain its previous heights. And not just that. Charles called Saylor a toxic Bitcoin maximalist. Personally, I would say that there's no problem with being a Bitcoin maximalist. But if you are toxic like Michael Saylor, that's definitely a red flag. Listen closely to what Charles Hoskinson commented. What are your thoughts on Saylor claiming Cardano is a security? Well, you know, Mike Saylor is the tone vase of uh, this uh, cycle of you know, uh, him and Jimmy's song of this cycle of crypto. So back in the day, we had tone and Tone was this podcast. He's still around, and I like Tone. But he had this thing. It's like, everything's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. Oh, it's a scam. Oh, my God. It's a scam. Everybody's scamming. He even had this thing called the Scammies. It was his award ceremony, the Scammies. So now we got Mike Saylor. He's like, Bitcoin is the way. Again, it doesn't do anything for real fi. I can't build a decentralized power grid. I can't build a centralized telecommunications company. I can't build a centralized compute. I have no identity solution. It's not programmable, so I don't have dApps and DeFi. I can't even issue an asset, so I have no NFTs, right? It's all outside of that. But don't worry, layer two protocols that are highly centralized will somehow solve all of this. Great. So that's great. It's the best thing ever, and it's so magical, and who cares about the mining and all this? Everything else is scam, and everything else is security. Nobody controls it. It's completely decentralized, far more than Bitcoin. It has more use and utility. People buy the token not to speculate, which is the only thing they can do with Bitcoin. They buy the token to use it for stuff. I don't know, medical records and whatever the hell else they're doing because it is real life utility. But that's a security. But the thing that you only thing you can do is speculate on is not. I, I think Mike's head is all fucked up and screwed up. Uh, you know, it's just one of those cases where he's he's dick deep full dick in uh with bitcoin and so uh, you know it's got to work if it doesn't work the way he hopes he goes bankrupt uh so I, I don't pay much attention to it and i don't think it's a productive conversation at all and frankly the most difficult toxic and useless people to engage with are bitcoin maximalists they're not intellectually honest like jimmy song saying that at any given time a you know, proof of stake system you know somebody can just arbitrarily take all your money and shut it down it's not honest. It's it's just libel. You know, it's it's not true. The protocols don't do that. And they feel they have no burden of proof and evidence of the statements that they make. And then they say the only thing that matters is their thing, even though their thing doesn't do anything. Just stores value. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, we can briefly look at how XRP is doing in this market. In truth, XRP is doing much better than most of these cryptocurrencies. 
We're currently at 35 cents and continue with an uptrend. Now it will have to break above 36 cents. So let's stay on the lookout. See what the market will be like further into this month. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the SEC just lost the lawsuit to Ripple, at least according to people on Twitter who have been following the lawsuit closely. A couple of days ago, James Filan took to his Twitter feed to post a transcript of the June 7th hearing between Ripple, the SEC, and Judge Netburn. In this hearing, one of the main agenda items was to talk about the attorney-client privilege that the SEC recently brought up and have tried to use as their argument to restrict the release of all the emails about the Bill Hinman speech. It's crazy over the last year the Bill Hinman speech has become the center of this entire lawsuit. But nonetheless, if we have a look at the transcript that James Filan posted, we can literally see the SEC telling the judge that the Henman speech was the SEC guidance and was supposed to be taken as legal advice as to how the SEC would actually see digital assets in a certain light. The most ironic thing is that about a year ago, they said the exact opposite of that. They in fact said that Bill Hemmings speech was his own personal opinion. They said that this was in no way meant to be SEC guidance. Now, I know you might be wondering why the SEC is trying to change their narrative now. Well, I'll tell you this. They are trying to assert the attorney-client privilege in order to be able to hide all those discussions they had about Ripple XRP and clarity on the crypto market. They don't want the world to know who was involved in writing these emails and any opinions the SEC might have had on any digital asset class. We know for a fact that the SEC is trying hard to hide the backstory behind all of it, and there could be a bunch of names involved that may draw interest. But exactly why are we saying that the SEC has already lost this case? Well, in the transcript that James Filan shared on his Twitter account, we can see that Judge Netburn was like, I hear what you're saying now about the SEC giving guidance, and that's why you want these emails and discussions to be protected. But about a year ago, you all said something very different, the exact opposite. And this is it, guys. We now have transcripts of both now and a year ago, and it's just crazy how the SEC is trying to claim both sides of the story. It just shows that the SEC is hanging by a thread and that they are heavily failing at this lawsuit. No wonder Judge Netburn went ahead and denied the SEC's most recent motion to assert the attorney-client privilege and protect the emails. But now it's clear to everyone that the SEC has no stand in this lawsuit as they have tried to use both sides of the coin to their defense. The SEC, however, still does have a couple of days to appeal to Judge Torres. But do you guys really think that the SEC will go through with the appeal? As we all know, they haven't had the best results from their appeals in the past. and I wouldn't be exactly surprised if this one as well doesn't go their way. But we're just going to have to wait it out and see what will unfold. Now, as we wind down on today's video, I'd like for you to listen to what Gary Gensler, and he's asking Hester Pierce in 2018, what advice would you have for this audience and the thousands of people who are in some cases feeling like they are waiting on the SEC to give more clarity? How ironic this entire lawsuit has just been the absolute circus. From jurisdictions like the U.S., we find ourselves thinking about things like the Howey test and what is an investment contract because this new permissionless crowdfunding uh, sure feels like uh, a, a security. Um, how, what, what advice would you have for this audience and for the thousands of people who are, in some cases, feeling that they're waiting for the SEC to give more clarity in this, this world? Well, I think there is some clarity there already, right? If you're doing something that's basically saying, I'm trying to fund a project, i.e. a company, um, to build something and I want you to give me money to do that um, and I'm going to take the money and I'm going to build the project with the money you give and you're not going to have any role in that. You're just going to earn profits if I do a good job. That's a security. That looks very much like a traditional security. And so you should expect that that's going to implicate our rules. As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. Please keep in mind we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. You can always let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.